Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids of the Week video. I thought I would mix one of these in here while I'm continuing with your new suggestions. So, thank you so much again everyone for your continued suggestions. Please continue to do so. I'll probably wrap up this series within the next week or two. And this random entry here has to do with something that's quite fascinating in the sense that there's almost like a small population of it throughout multiple parts of Central Africa. When I was reading the information on it, I saw that the location, or actually the multiple locations that this creature is found, it definitely makes it seem like there's a whole population of these out there. It's just too much to ignore. It's one of those rare situations where this is almost like its own species somewhere there in Central Africa. And the fact that so many people have seen this, and also it's located in so many particular rivers, it's just fascinating to think that this thing, even though it's found in so many places, is still pretty well kept hidden. And it has to do with this. It's a creature that goes by multiple names because of the fact that it's found in multiple locations. But for lack of, of, of in this case, of co for more convenience, uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it, as it's known more commonly, as the water lions. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating info associated with this unique cryptid. So what is the water lions, or the species known as water lions? Well, there are a series of large cats, for lack of a better term, that are found within Central Africa. So they could be described as large lions or they could be described as large leopards. The whole idea is that they are very, very much so larger cats or felines that are found throughout multiple parts of Central Africa, in particular, anything involving large rivers or bodies of water. And that's why they're called water lions, because apparently they seem to have a life that is far more amphibious than anything involving staying on land. So here are the physical characteristics of the water lions. So it's a creature that is about 8 to 12 feet long. Very large creature, much larger than your average person. That's what I was mentioning just a minute ago that this is a very large feline. This is a creature that has been described as looking like an oversized leopard or an oversized lion, more on the lines of a leopard considering the fact that it's found more with either striped or spotted fur. Kind of like you would see like your average leopard, just much larger. It also has what's consistent with a hairy tail, and it also has two unique features that definitely make it stand out from any other type of leopard or lion. Number one is the fact that it has very long fangs on the top of, of its mouth, more on the lines of saber tooth fangs, like the classic saber tooth tiger that you've all seen on any type of museum. Well, those are the type of fangs that this creature has. The other unique uh, characteristic is this. Its skin or its fur seems to be much more semi-aquatic. It has more of a scaly, possibly wet type fur associated with it. When I was thinking of this, like imagine, if you will, like something like a duck or some other type of, of creature that is commonly found with fur, but more on the lines of the water. And that's how I imagine that this thing is. Perfectly adapted, perfectly built for something along those lines. And so this is why it's considered more on the lines of an amphibious creature. It delves itself within all those rivers, and it lives within those rivers on a consistent basis. It, there's no idea, though, like if it truly is living in the river 100% underneath. Like, let's say something along the lines of... Of, of breathing underwater, sleeping underwater, something like that. Um, I didn't read anything along those lines, and I don't think that's the case either. But it does seem to live most of its life by the river or in the river, and then it comes out when it comes to eating or finding any type of food. That's another thing that stands out with this creature. This one is a no-no. This was definitely a cryptid that you do not want to come across because it's considered very very dangerous, very deadly. In fact, it is a voracious hunter. It is something that not only eats anything it can find within the river, and there are theories, in fact, that, that with its 
that with its scaly fur and then its saber tooth like fangs, it can easily adapt itself to hunting there in the river and it uses even its fangs to help uncover anything underneath, let's say, rocks that are within the bottom of the sea itself. No, but in this case, when it comes across on land, this is a creature that is known to be a man eater. It can definitely hunt people and it definitely makes meals out of them so you do not want to come across this creature at all out there especially considering its size 8 to 12 feet long this is not something to mess around with and in fact some of the earliest known sightings are in the 1900s the early 1900s and even then one of the earliest known sightings was in 1911 where there was a french tirelure this is how they're described they're almost like guides that are used by French travelers. One of them was supposedly crossing one of the rivers there known as the Kukuru River and he was eaten by one of these creatures. He was seen to be attacked by one of these water lions and then this poor fellow basically met his demise right then and there. So this is not something that you want to come across with as I was mentioning earlier. But also, I was, uh, at the beginning of the video, I was stating that there's so many locations where this where this creature is found. So get this, all these locations, all these rivers where this creature is found, there are also nicknames. All of them translate to the term water lion, but here's some examples of them. Like for example, there's a river that's called the uh, Upper Kuanga and Kwanza rivers, and there it's known as the Kohei Yamenia. Then there's another river known as the Uham River, and there it's known as the Dalali. Then there's that another river that's known as the Vavoto River, and there it's known as the uh, Goroli. And then yet again, there's another river known as the Lullaby River, and there it's known as the Zifu Loi. And then it just continues, name after name after name, when it comes to where the locations are and the way the people that live there, uh, they've come up with all of these nicknames for these water lions. But it all seems to be the same. These fur-like creatures the, that have like this scaly skin or wet type fur, and then they have these large fangs, and then they have these large bodies within them, all of them being this type of water lions. And then as far as the most recent sighting, it's not too far back, 1985 in fact, that's when there was uh, apparently some type of encounter with this creature. There's even this, the idea that there's roars that are found throughout these rivers. So if you're crossing these rivers, let's say you find yourself there in Central Africa, and you're crossing some of these rivers, and then you hear this unusual rumbling roar in the far off distance, or maybe even worse if it's nearby, well, it's attributed to the fact that it's another one of these water lions. So that, imagine hearing something like that out there in the middle of nowhere. You can just imagine, as large as these creatures are, the very type of deep roar that this thing would have. And then with the way the forests work, the way it reverberates things, how it could just make things that much scarier. So forget that. I'm not going to be any anywhere near this location, but if you do happen to come across it, then that's where you'll see it. There's also this. Some of the villagers there have either killed or done something involving these water lions, and one of the headmen at one of the villages there supposedly owned one of these skulls, too. Unfortunately, nothing in terms of like any kind of proof, photographs, anything like that that showcases the skull itself, but imagine coming across that, and then you'll be able to see the, the actual saber tooth like teeth associated with it. And now as far as where this creature came from, its origins, what it could be, the most common theory is that this could be just a long lost actual saber tooth set of cats, something that just lived and, 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 and didn't become extinct there in Central Africa. And then to this day, they just seem to be come across uh, by people or by some of the villagers there. Another theory is that it's another evolution of another type of big cat. So not, not exactly like a saber tooth cat that existed all this time, but rather a large cat that adapted to its environment and, and, and the fact that it was competing with so many land-like feline animals that it decided to adapt there in the water itself. Interesting theory. It, it, the, I, I would see something like that happening because nature is always changing, evolution is always changing, and it adapts itself to whatever works. So if something is coming across, let's say, too much competition, 
and is dying out, then over the course of generations of new births, then these animals would adapt to whatever would allow it to succeed. And so having and finding an environment there in the water, I can see that totally happening along those lines. And then other type of, of ideas is that it's just misinterpretations. It could actually be something along the lines of a crocodile that people misinterpreted from far away, maybe even monitor lizards, maybe even also water elephants, anything along those lines um, that, that people just, uh, for whatever reason, see it as something else entirely different when it's truly just a real life animal in this case. But that's at least some of the other theories associated with this creature. One last interesting bit, this is such a dangerous creature that it's known to attack and eat hippopotamus as well. So the hippopotamus themselves are not uh, peaceful creatures. They are very dangerous as well. So imagine two big animals like this going at it and you'll see that one of them is definitely going to be the victor and be the true dominant animal and such is the case here with this water lion. The reason why people are assuming that it's that it's something along the lines of, of a hunter of hippopotamus is because there have been those f animals found with these unusual, very, very large type gashes or wounds within them. So the corpses were found and they were eaten, but they were also some of the telltale signs of the attack. And in this case, something very large with large fangs or large claws caused these wounds on the animal. And it's the idea that it could be yet another water lion type attack. But what do you guys think as far as this type of species there in Central Africa, this water lion? Interesting, right? So many different accounts, locations, uh, in terms of, of this creature, uh, that it's, it's bound to be its own small species out there. And yet it's still not really truly found to this day. So who knows, maybe it's out there still hunting along those rivers. But if anyone has any more info, anything else might have missed, then please post those comments below. All right, everyone. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.